So in this one, uh, we are creating, um, we're going to learn how to create a post, okay? So now, this is the information that we need for the post table. So we're going to create a new table in the database, which has these columns here. So the first one is the date. Of course, we need to know, we need to save the date that uh, the post was created. And then we need an ID. Now the ID is for the database to create automatically, just like it does in the uh, in the users table here. It's, it goes three, four, five, this is automatic for the database to be able to retrieve the particular record that you want. So that's required. And then we go to the post ID, right? So just like we have the user ID here, we want a random uh, text, a random number that we can generate. Now, the reason we are not using this ID right here is because this ID is sequential, meaning that there's going to be post number three, number four, number five. So somebody could pretty much guess. They could simply type in in the URL, they could type in uh, post number 100 and then the post will come up. So this is not good for security reasons because certain posts should be private and so on. So we generate a random post ID the same way we did here. And then we have to add the user ID. Now this user ID is for the user that actually posted that post. Now the reason we don't add the username and last name to the post is because these things can change. So the user can change the first name and last name if they wish to. However, the user ID will never change. So that way we can know this is exactly the same user because if the user changes the name, then we get lost as to who posted this, so which is not cool. So by adding the user ID, we know uh, no matter how much the username changes, we'll still know which user posted that. And then the post is the actual content of the post, because as you can see here, we have some text here, which will be the actual content of the post. And then we'll have an image. Now the image, sometimes the user want to post an image, uh, inside the post so here this is for keeping the link or the path to the image because we don't actually save images directly into the database that is not good because images are quite large we don't want the database to become slow especially when you have multiple users or thousands of users on your social website so you keep images on the drive and then you simply save the link or the path to that image in the database and then here we're going to save the number of comments this is simply a number and the number of likes okay so that pretty much does it uh, for the columns if we need more columns we can add them later so to do that we go to our local host my php my admin and we go to the uh, particular database that we want in this case it's my book db and then we hit the new button here to create a new table now of course uh, it's not a mystery we're going to call this table uh, posts of course now the way uh, things like uh, uh, systems like WordPress do this is because that all posts and pages and everything are saved in one table so in this case we would save the posts uh, the users the pages and the comments on one table however that is uh, if you're creating the website yourself it's a good idea to separate the tables because it makes it easier to read and find the data so the comments will have another table of their own this table is specifically for the posts alone okay so let's go down here since we've created new let's give it a name up here so the name obviously is going to be uh, posts. My PHP, my admin is a bit slow because of uh, the capture software. All right, so if we can see here, we have to count the number of tables, one, two, three, four, the number of columns, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have one, two, three, four given to us. So let's add four more here. So I'm just going to go and add four, one, two, three, four, and say go. So that'll probably take a little while processing the requests. A bit slow because of the 
screen capture software. All right, so now that we're done, let me go back here and add my column names. So the first one, I won't start with date. I like to start with uh, the ID instead. So I'm simply going to type ID. And then of course I need the post ID. I'll just use one, one word like that, posted, post ID, user ID. If you want, you can be adding underscore instead so that it's user readable like that, user ID, but uh, I like it like this. And then I'm going to add, what's the next one? So there's ID, this post ID, user ID, and the actual post and image. So let's type post and let's go to image. And then what else do we need? We need the comments and the likes. So comments. And down here we have uh, likes. And then finally, we have date. Now we are required to uh, specify the type of data. So let's go to this one and hit timestamp. So the date is timestamp and that's it we need to do. Now likes and comments, uh, that's int integer is big enough to get whatever likes somebody can get. Uh, because this is, a, if I'm not mistaken, a 10 digit number, which is uh, quite big. But if you're expecting more likes, uh, you can simply move this to big int instead. But I'll leave it at int, that's good enough. And the image, since we're saving a path, this will be a variable character, okay? Var ka. Comments is a number as well, so we leave it at int. And then, so image, co uh, all right, so it moved the wrong one. So let me go back to int here, comments is int. It's the image that is supposed to be variable character. Oh yeah, the slowness is killing me here. All right, variable character and then uh, post. Now post here is interesting because post is text and we don't know how much text the user is going to add. So we simply go to the text value here now, if you want to limit uh, the what a user can post or how long uh, the user can post, you can simply add variable character and then you give the number of uh, words here. Just maybe 500 words or something like that. Oh, it's not words actually, it's characters. So a space a, is a character as well, a number, a, a letter and so on. But I'll leave it at text so that people can post uh, whatever they want. And then the user ID is big int because that's the value we have in the users uh, table. And we're going to use big int as well for post ID because uh, these numbers can get really big. So big int. And then we're going to use big int as well for the actual ID at the top here. So big int, big int. That's a large integer. Now big int, the maximum is 19 numbers if i'm not mistaken so that is the length of big int okay still processing wow all right so 19 in length and 19 there as well i'm not sure if you need to specify or it can be automatic uh, you can test that <coughs> excuse me hopefully i don't have coronavirus <laughs> All right, so in image, uh, we can guess as to how long the file path could be. So I think I'm going to leave it at 500 characters. That should be enough. In text, you don't need to specify the number because text can be any length. And here, I think it will automatically assign this to 11, if I'm not mistaken. And timestamp, you don't need to do anything about that. So the only thing we need to do here is to make sure that the uh, ID at the top here is the primary key. So in order to do that, we scroll to this side and we say index and we select uh, primary. Okay. It should bring a dialog box, uh, pretty slow. And also uh, this, all right, so here you just say go. And also you have to make sure that you select the auto increment 
which is this one right here. It says AI in here. It could say auto increment in your uh, particular case. So that is to make sure that the database itself increments the number automatically of the ID. That's pretty much what we need to select for now. We will add the indices later. So let me hit the save to process the request. And once I do that, we have our structure right here. So there we go. Now, if there are uh, parts here that we might need in order to, uh, to search for, for example, will you need to search for the post ID? I most certainly will. I may need to search for the user ID because for example, if, if a user opens uh, their profile here, uh, the database or the website has to know because uh, this is going to contain posts for everyone, every user on this website. So it has to be able to select particular uh, posts for this specific user using the user's ID. So which means we are definitely going to be using the user ID to search. So the post ID, we might use that to search as well. So let me just go down here and say more index. So we're adding an index to the post ID here. Just say OK. And then we're going to add an index to the user ID as well because we will be search using that to search. So we add an index. And then what else? We're not going to be searching for the image at all. Uh, the image path, that is. And we're not going to be searching. We might want to order our posts by number of comments or number of likes. If you're going to do that, uh, this, this might uh, give us a clue as to what post is trending. So we add an index there as well. So we go to comments and then we go to likes as well and add an index because that might give us a clue as to what's trending. And we might need to search uh, a post by its date. So let's uh, add an index there as well. Okay, so it turns out the only thing that doesn't need... Oh, I added the image index, which was wrong. I was supposed to add to the comments. Well, because of my slow system here, let me hit OK. Then I can remove the index for the image by going down here. Uh, where is that? Image, uh, drop, and hit OK. So I don't need that. The indices take a lot of space. Uh, they enlarge the size of your database. So just add the number of indices that you need in order for your website to function. So in this case where we might need to search the text for the post itself, we could add what is called a full text search in the post there. That way it will enable us to be able to search for particular keywords in, a, in somebody's post. So we can add a full text on that one. All right, and that's about it for this uh, particular. So if I go down here to browse, that's where I'm going to see what posts are in here. If I click on my DB, then I can see a list of uh, tables that I have. So I have users and I have posts now. So in the next video, we're going to see how to actually add a post from this location to get the post from here to actually here. So as you have guessed already, we are going to need to create a class that will handle uh, this particular situation. So I'll see you in the next video.